Have you ever encountered something truly remarkable? Get ready for a tale straight out of an adventure novel, yet firmly rooted in reality. The Ethiopian Bible, a source of mystery and debate, emerges as one of history's most intriguing artifacts. Ethiopia itself remains Africa's sole unconquered nation, a testament to its rich and enigmatic history. This resilience and independence have allowed Ethiopia to preserve its unique cultural and religious heritage without the external influences that shaped many other nations. Ethiopia boasts one of humanity's oldest civilizations, tracing its lineage back to Ham, one of Noah's sons, a heritage revered in Jewish traditions. The ancient kingdom of Aksum, often considered the precursor to modern Ethiopia, played a significant role in trade and cultural exchange in the ancient world. However, our focus isn't solely on Ethiopia's past, but on the treasures nestled within its borders. The Ethiopic Bible, distinct from Western Christian scriptures, comprises 88 books compared to the standard 66. It includes the familiar Old and New Testament scriptures and expands with canonical texts like the Book of Enoch and Jubilees alongside unique Ethiopian manuscripts. This collection forms the cornerstone of Ethiopian Orthodox Christianity, shaping its theology and worship practices while offering insights into early Christian beliefs in Ethiopia before formal Christianization. The inclusion of these additional texts provides a broader perspective on biblical narratives and theological concepts, reflecting a rich tapestry of spiritual thought that has evolved over centuries. Ethiopia embraced Christianity independently in the 4th century, untouched by colonialism or missionaries. The story of King Azana's conversion to Christianity marks a pivotal moment in Ethiopian history, symbolizing the nation's early and voluntary adoption of the Christian faith. Travelers such as Cosmas Indicopliustis in the 6th century documented Ethiopia's vibrant Christian culture, a blend of local traditions and Christian beliefs. The Ethiopian Orthodox Church, known as Tewado, embodies this heritage with its ancient Ge'ez liturgy and profound theology. The use of the Ge'ez language, an ancient Semitic language, in religious texts and liturgy highlights Ethiopia's commitment to preserving its linguistic heritage. Ethiopia's history of sheltering persecuted Christians further underscores its deep-rooted faith, showcasing Christianity's flourishing in Africa long before external influences significantly impacted its spread. This tradition of sanctuary is evident in the stories of the nine saints who fled persecution in the Roman Empire and found refuge in Ethiopia, contributing to the spread of monasticism and Christian scholarship. For over 3,500 years, Ethiopian tribes have worshipped the Christian God, blending indigenous cultural practices with Christian rituals and beliefs. This cultural synthesis culminates in the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, or Tewado, tracing its origins to apostolic times and asserting itself as one of the oldest Christian churches globally. The church's liturgical traditions in Ge'ez exemplify Ethiopia's profound Christian heritage and steadfast commitment to preserving traditional religious customs. Ethiopia houses some of the earliest illustrated Christian manuscripts ever discovered, including parts of the Gospels written in Ge'ez. Unearthed in 2010 at a monastery atop an Ethiopian mountain. These manuscripts showcase the artistic and literary achievements of Ethiopian Christians over time, underscoring Ethiopia's significance in Christian scholarship and spirituality in Africa, influencing theological discussions and artistic styles worldwide. These manuscripts provide invaluable insights into the development of Christian art and literature, reflecting the deep devotion and meticulous craftsmanship of Ethiopian scribes. According to the Kibra Nagast, a sacred Ethiopian Ethiopian text. In the 10th century BC, an Ethiopian ruler and the legendary Queen of Sheba journeyed to Jerusalem to seek King Solomon's wisdom. Mentioned in the Bible, particularly in Vir Kings and 2 Chronicles, the Queen of Sheba visits Solomon, impressed by his wisdom and wealth. According to the Kebra Nagast, this meeting led to the birth of Solomon's son Menelik, whom she brought back to Ethiopia. Menelik later became Ethiopia's first emperor, establishing a dynastic lineage that left an indelible mark on Ethiopian history. History. This story not only highlights the ancient ties between Ethiopia and Israel, but also reinforces Ethiopia's claim to a significant place in biblical history. Genetic studies on Ethiopians provide compelling evidence supporting the legendary narrative of the Queen of Sheba's journey to Jerusalem and her lineage. These studies indicate intermixing between Ethiopians and people from Egypt, Israel, or Syria 
approximately 3,000 years ago, aligning with the period traditionally associated with the Queen of Sheba's reign. This genetic insight deepens our understanding of the historical context surrounding this legendary figure and suggests a complex web of cultural and genetic exchanges in the ancient world. Despite its profound historical significance, the Ethiopian Bible remains largely overlooked and excluded from recognized canonical scriptures in many religious traditions. Surprisingly, even within the same faith community, many believers are unaware of its existence. This marginalization prompts critical inquiries into the reasons behind its neglect and exclusion. Historically, the Ethiopian Orthodox Church developed independently, maintaining its own canon of scripture different from Western Christian traditions. The theological interpretations and emphases within various Christian traditions have also influenced the acceptance and promotion of specific biblical books. Geopolitical influences, including colonialism and cultural biases, have further contributed to the marginalization of non-Western religious texts, including the Ethiopian Bible. This exclusion underscores the broader challenges of recognizing and valuing diverse religious traditions and texts in a global context dominated by Western perspectives. The Bible, as we know it today, underwent centuries of translation and canonization. Originally written in Hebrew, Old Testament, and Greek, New Testament, these texts were later translated into Latin by figures like St. Jerome, resulting in the Vulgate around 400 AD. The Vulgate remains a significant Latin translation containing the same 27 books of the New Testament and 39 books of the Old Testament as found in the Hebrew Bible. During early Christianity, numerous writings emerged detailing aspects of Jesus' life and teachings. These apocryphal texts, not included in the established biblical canon, were sometimes viewed as unofficial or speculative accounts akin to fan fiction. The diversity of these texts reflects the rich and varied landscape of early Christian thought and the different communities that contributed to its development. The canonization process involved councils like Nicaea 325 AD and Constantinople 381 AD, where early Christian leaders discerned and affirmed which writings should be considered authoritative and included in the New Testament. Despite challenges in manuscript transmission and variations across copies, rigorous efforts were made to preserve the integrity of biblical texts through meticulous copying and scholarly scrutiny. During the reign of King James the Forest of England, concerns over the proliferation of Bible translations prompted him to commission a new English version in 1604. With a desire to unify religious practices and reinforce his authority, King James assembled 47 scholars into six committees tasked with translating different sections of the Bible. Over seven years, these experts translated from Hebrew, Greek, and Aramaic texts, aiming for accuracy and impartiality. The resulting King James Bible was published in 1611 and quickly became one of the most accessible and influential Bible versions in English, although it differs in biblical canon from Catholic and Orthodox traditions. Meanwhile, the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church maintains a broader canon, including additional scriptures not found in most Western Bibles. The persistence of these varied biblical canons highlights the dynamic and multifaceted nature of Christian textual traditions. Exploring the history of the Bible, we delve into why the Ethiopian Bible includes several books compared to other Christian traditions. The Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church's Bible contains additional books not found in Protestant or Catholic canons. These texts, like Wes Enoch and Jubilees, are part of the broader biblical canon in Ethiopian Christianity. While some of these books are classified as pseudepigrapha by other traditions, ancient books attributed to authors who did not write them, they are considered divinely inspired and part of the Ethiopian Orthodox Tewahedo Church's canon. This inclusion highlights the complex process of forming the biblical canon, shaped by theological, historical, and political factors. Various Christian traditions, Catholic, Orthodox, Protestant, have distinct criteria for canonical acceptance. The Ethiopian Church's criteria included books not accepted by other traditions. This broader canon offers a richer and more diverse understanding of biblical literature, reflecting the unique theological perspectives and historical experiences of the Ethiopian Church. Understanding why different books are accepted or rejected involves recognizing that these decisions were based on factors such as apostolic authorship, theological consistency, and widespread use in early Christian worship. The differences in canon reflect the diverse historical and cultural contexts in which these traditions 
developed. The Ethiopian Bible's distinct canon provides an important counterpoint to the more widely recognized Western canons, emphasizing the global and varied nature of Christian scriptural traditions. The Ethiopian Bible isn't a singular entity, but is distinguished by two distinct canons, the broader and narrower. Let's define what a canon is. A canon serves as an authoritative measure and standard for which things are judged. For instance, it's canon for a car to have four wheels, for a recipe to include specific ingredients, and for this channel to have more subscribers. The broader canon is widely renowned and consists of 81 books. Among its treasures are texts like the Book of Enoch, offering a gateway into ancient prophecy and divine revelations. Visions of angels and cosmic secrets unfold with mystical allure. The Book of Jubilees presents a unique narrative of Genesis and Exodus, enriched with additional laws and historical insights, offering a deeper understanding of early Jewish traditions. The Wisdom of Solomon offers timeless reflections on virtuous living and divine guidance attributed to King Solomon. The Epistle to Clement provides insights into early Christian teachings on leadership and community harmony through the wisdom of Clement of Rome. Additionally, the Synodos, comprising four books, offers a glimpse into the organizational structure and spiritual practices of the Ethiopian Orthodox Church, embodying centuries of religious tradition and communal life. This Ethiopian Bible canon, with 81 books in its broader and widely recognized form, captivates scholars and enthusiasts alike. In contrast, Emperor Haile Selassie curated a narrower canon version of 72 books, endorsing it as the complete Ethiopian Bible. The reasons for this decision are nuanced and historically sensitive, inviting further exploration beyond this brief overview. The narrower canon omits certain scriptures found in the broader canon, resulting in a collection of 72 books. Interestingly, the broader canon has not undergone widespread reprinting since the early 20th century, leading to ongoing scholarly discussions and interpretations. The divergence between these two versions historically sparked debates and controversies within Ethiopian Christian communities. The decision-making process behind defining these canons reflects complex theological and historical considerations, influencing their acceptance and usage. Despite these differences, both versions hold significant religious and cultural importance, contributing to the rich tapestry of Ethiopian Christian tradition. The Ethiopian Bible offers a fascinating view of how the Bible evolved over centuries. Instead of being a single book, it's a diverse collection of texts from different times and places. This diversity sparks long debates among religious groups about which writings should be included or excluded based on their beliefs. The process of canon formation was influenced by various factors, including theological, historical, and political considerations, resulting in the diverse range of biblical canons seen today. While most of the Bible as we know it today was formed in the 4th and 5th centuries AD, Ethiopian Christianity began to differ from European and Mediterranean Christianity earlier on. This has continued to shape the Ethiopian Bible, which, like Catholic and Orthodox Bibles, includes Old Testament books written before the New Testament. The Ethiopian canon also includes unique Old Testament books shedding light on Ethiopian church history and structure. The Ethiopian Bible has encountered resistance because it's primarily written in Ge'ez, an ancient language that's hard for non-speakers to understand. Additionally, limited translations and distinctive practices associated with the Ethiopian Bible have contributed to its lesser-known status beyond Ethiopia. Ethiopia. The language barrier and the unique nature of its contents have often limited its accessibility and recognition in the wider Christian world. In Christian history, the Ethiopian Bible holds a unique position shaped by both preservation challenges and cultural significance. While the exact historical context of scroll destruction orders by a Roman bishop is debated, the formation of biblical canons involved decisions and debates within early Christian communities. The Ethiopian Bible's canon includes ancient texts not found in other Christian traditions, reflecting Ethiopia's distinctive religious practices. These texts were safeguarded through the efforts of Ethiopian monks and communities who cherished their sacred scriptures amidst various historical challenges. The commitment of these communities to preserving their religious heritage has ensured the survival of these unique texts through centuries of turmoil and change. The discovery of ancient manuscripts near the Dead Sea in the 1940s, including non-canonical texts highlighted the diversity within early Christian scriptures rather than a deliberate effort to hide them from destruction. 
This discovery sparked global interest in the broader scope of Christian texts and their historical contexts. These texts, often referred to as the Dead Sea Scrolls, provided new insights into the religious landscape of the Second Temple period, revealing the complex interplay of different Jewish and early Christian traditions. Despite facing threats such as invasions and fires, the Ethiopian Bible has endured, symbolizing Ethiopia's enduring faith and cultural resilience. For instance, the near destruction of the monastery housing the Bible in a 1930s fire underscored the reverence and determination to protect these sacred texts. In recent years, Ethiopian churches have endeavored to make the Bible more accessible through translations into various languages and academic studies. These efforts celebrate the Bible's role in Ethiopian Christianity and invite global scholars to explore its unique texts and theological insights. The ongoing work to preserve and study the Ethiopian Bible reflects a broader commitment to understanding and valuing diverse religious traditions. The Ethiopian Bible continues to captivate scholars and believers alike, offering insights into early Christian beliefs and Ethiopia's rich cultural heritage. Its inclusion of distinct texts provides a deeper understanding of the diversity within Christian scriptures and the dynamic evolution of global Christianity. The study of the Ethiopian Bible not only enriches our knowledge of early Christianity, but also highlights the significance significant contributions of Ethiopian scholars and religious leaders to the broader Christian tradition. In conclusion, the Ethiopian Bible stands as a testament to Ethiopia's deep-rooted faith and cultural heritage. Its unique canon and historical journey contribute to our understanding of global Christian diversity and highlight Ethiopia's enduring commitment to preserving its religious traditions. Through ongoing efforts in preservation and study, the Ethiopian Bible continues to enrich our appreciation of Christian history and its diverse expressions worldwide. The resilience and dedication of the Ethiopian people in maintaining their religious heritage serve as an inspiration to scholars and believers alike, reminding us of the profound and enduring impact of faith and culture on human history.